All right. So if you're here in this room right now, you're going to make it. Let me tell you why. So right now we are here. We are, uh, our bags are down bad, some of our NFTs, as much as 90% from the all-time highs, but it's going to be okay. Um, and so this is basically a, uh, a chart called the Hype Cycle. It's created by Gartner, a global research and advisory firm, to explain uh, the maturity, adoption, and life cycle of new disruptive technologies. And I spent my background, my career in Silicon Valley as an entrepreneur and developer, and I can tell you, I've seen this movie a few times. Right? We've seen this happen before. We're in a phase called the trough of disillusionment. So 2023, 2024, uh, we're here because of unmet expectations with the technology. Essentially, people have, many people have lost money, uh, people have left the space, um, and startups have failed or pivoted into other industries, as well as a general negative sentiment over the technology and um, in the public perception. But just two years ago, we were at what's called the peak of inflated expectations, okay? The good old days, 2021, 2023, 2022. You remember every NFT you minted went up, and um, this is what always happens with um, breakthrough technologies, right? There's rapid publicity and hype. A lot of investment comes in. We have new entrants like Web2 brands, legacy brands coming in, launching projects. They don't really understand the technology. They don't really know why they're doing it. They end up leaving uh, after that. And overall, you have um, projects over-promising and under-delivering and um, all the investment sort of uh, there's, there's a lot of waste basically in the cycle, right? But the good news is that we are coming toward what's called the slope of enlightenment. And so the slope of enlightenment is a renewed understanding and realism around what this technology is for, okay? So we learn from the failures of the past and developers start to use that information to be more productive, to build things that users get real value out of, and that leads to increased investment and it leads to essentially the beginning of broader uh, adoption, right? And broader acceptance. And so the good days are just around the corner because the slope of enlightenment leads us to the promised land. This is mainstream adoption. This is where the technology is just seamlessly integrated into our lives. It's where um, the, uh, there's widespread training and there's proven value and benefits to it. There's expertise that's widely available. It's lower cost, it's lower risk. And we probably even forget what the word NFT means. We just interact with this technology on a daily basis. And so we don't know what technologies or what products are going to get us to this promised land and lead to major adoption. However, we can find clues by working backwards based on first principles to understand what actually inspired us to begin with from this technology. And so from my perspective, what gets me really excited about NFTs and ordinals, this technology that we're working with, is community ownership. And so we know that community ownership beats centralized control. This is a core belief that we have in Web3. And so when it comes to uh, this, um, it not only it means that NFTs are the most powerful community technology ever invented, but it also means that it changes fundamentally how businesses and projects are created. And so what do I mean by that? So this is, um, this is the traditional Web2 model, right? This is what it looks like for a project to be successful over time. It starts out in the R&D uh, phase, like heavy costs are invested in building a product. And if you're successful, you essentially launch you know, a hit product and you climb the slope uh, to become successful. Now, the issue with this Web2 model is what's called the cold start problem, right? 95% of new projects fail and they, um, there's a lot of risk in this phase because you're reliant on really finding that product market fit and having a hit product. But the Web3 model changes this. The Web3 model, in fact, flips this and adds the ownership value to the equation. And so by involving your community in becoming owners, and you know, essentially they're also taking a risk with you, joining your vision to um, create your project, you are rate, making a new value equation. And so this makes things much lower risk. It also um, has your community members sort of sharing the risk with you. But in exchange, they need to get share in the upside, okay? And so in order for this model to work, it's actually not just about having a token. It's really about co-creation, right? It's about recruiting 
artists, builders, smart people to be a part of your community, similar to how we know open source software works, but applying that model with incentives and with benefits to being a part of a community. And so we believe that all of these different industries are gonna be disrupted by uh, the Web3 model, right? Art, music, gaming, media, software, these are just some of them. And the opportunity for you in this room is to be a part of these communities, to start your own communities, because ultimately, if you're in this room right now, you are the movement, right? You guys are gonna make it because we have to do this together. And so when it comes to um, this, it's not just about being able to give more value to more people, to the early adopters in our community, but it's also about bringing more innovations to the market faster, because more innovations is going to lead to better quality of life for the entire world. And so I'm about to introduce here uh, the speakers for, the, for our, our next talks, but first I wanna leave you with three of my values that are deep in my heart, and I hope that they will resonate with you and hopefully empower you to, uh, to leave this, uh, this conference and uh, contribute to this movement that we're all part of. And so the first value is that art and code is the alpha. So you have to work hard to uh, make this a reality, right? You have to hone your skills, you have to try to be the best in the world. In addition, you need to find other people to collaborate with. Like look at all the amazing people that we have at this conference, we have some of the best minds in our midst, and so look around yourself and find people to collaborate with, find people to partner with, and look for fun. Fun is a signal. It's not the answer, but fun is going to tell you um, qualitatively if you're going in the right direction. And so fundamentally, at the end of the day, we believe that building cool shit is the North Star. We think that um, a lot of people who have built so many of the technologies around us were inspired by just building cool shit. In fact, uh, Laszlo Haniek, when he sent 10,000 Bitcoins to Jeremy Sivesen for two pizzas in the first ever Bitcoin transaction, he couldn't have known that those 10,000 Bitcoin would be worth $700 million today. Neither could he, uh, nor could he have known that uh, 14 years later, uh, people in the Ornals community would find the same Satoshis and spend months and, and you know, entire teams would inscribe artwork and technology on top of them. But when asked why he uh, did the transaction, why he did 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas, um, Lazlo said he just thought it would be cool. And so we believe that the simple, the simple motivations can lead to the profound. And so by, by building cool shit, it sounds very simple, but we think it's the, the, the path to finding the profound. And I hope that when you leave here today, you will go out there and you will focus on doing cool things with everyone around you. And so uh, we have some incredible um, uh, speakers coming up next. We're gonna have Xverse, the number one Ordinals wallet. We have two airdrops, so we have an airdrop from Megapunks and also Ferrum. You're gonna need the Xverse wallet to be able to get uh, those airdrops. We have a Bitcoin layers pitch competition from uh, the winners of the pitch competition that we're doing a uh, competition on Monday. And finally, we have a special experience with Ferrum. So thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure being here with you. And I'll hand it over to Xverse. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trevor.